right, hi everyone. This is Algebra Keystone Prep Lesson 2, Rational and Irrational Numbers. So you should have already taken the pretest and we went over the answers for that. If you need questions, watch the video. Okay, so moving on to the actual lesson itself, real numbers are further classified as rational or irrational numbers. So the most common irrational number is pi. And the idea behind an irrational number is a number that is a decimal that never repeats itself. If it is a decimal that repeats itself, it's considered a rational number. So those are usually the two biggest classifications of numbers. You have rational numbers, which includes whole numbers, uh, integers, fractions, decimals, everything like that as long as it terminates at the end. So there's either a zero at the end or if it's a repeating decimal, so like one third um, is 0.333, that's a rational number because it can be written as a fraction. So any number that can be written as a fraction is a rational number. Any number that cannot be written as a fraction or has a non-repeating decimal is an irrational number. So the most common irrational number is pi, um, we also have square root of 2. That's another big one that you come across. Things like that. All right. So since irrational numbers never terminate or repeat, the decimal form of an irrational number is always an approximation. It's never exact. So square roots of numbers except perfect squares are all irrational numbers. So square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 5, square root of 6, 7, square root of 8, square root of not, 9 is a perfect square, so that's not, okay? So, for example, we have rational numbers, negative 1, uh, square root of 4 is a rational number, 3 squared is a rational number, 1 fourth is a rational number, Negative two thirds is a rational number. Okay, so those are all rational numbers. Irrational numbers, square root of two, pi, three times pi, negative pi, negative square root of three. Things like that, those are all irrational numbers. So rational versus irrational numbers, okay? So we can classify the following numbers. We're looking at example one. We can classify the numbers as either rational or irrational. Okay. So looking at example one, example one says classify the following numbers as rational or irrational. We have A, 2.371732. That cannot be written as a fraction because the decimal does not repeat. Okay, so you can see 3, 7, 1, 7, 3, 2, there's no, there's no pattern there. So that's not a rational number. B, 0 0.625, that is a rational number. It does terminate. So 0 0.625 can be written as a fraction, which actually is 5 eighths. C, 12.56637, again, there's no repeating digits, so therefore it is not a rational number, it is irrational. All right, so if we're estimating irrational numbers, since the decimal form of an irrational number is an approximate, okay, so it's a guess, basically, we can approximate where the values appear on a number line. So for example two, I'm gonna look at the square root of two. Here's my number line. And I'm looking for the square root of two. So the square root of 2, or sorry, the square root of 12, square root of 12 pi and 3.7671921. That's what I'm looking for my approximations of. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So the decimal is actually the easiest one to probably approximate because that 3.7671921, and it keeps going forever, okay? So I know that this is going to be between, I look at the big number in front of the decimal, this is going to be between 3 and 4, 3.7, 7 is going to be closer 
to this 4. So that's going to be about right here. So that's 3.76719211, blah, 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 okay? Pi we can approximate as 3.14. That's usually the approximation people ask you to use when they're finding, when you don't have a calculator to use for pi. So 3.14 is the approximation for pi. So 3.1 is going to be closer to the 3. So there's pi. Now we have the square root of 12, okay? So what I found when you're doing square roots and approximating square roots, you want to think about perfect squares, perfect square roots. So the perfect squares, square roots are 4, because 2 times 2 is 4, so that will give me 2. The square root of 9, which is 3. The square root of 16, which is 4, okay? So 12 is between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16, which means it's between 3 and 4. Now we have to figure out where on the number line square root of 12 would approximately be. So the then you can use a calculator if you want to. You can type in 12, the square root of 12. Okay, so you'll get approximately 3.4, which is about right here. So I also like to think 9 to 16, 12 is like right in the middle. So it's probably going to be around 3.4, 3.5, somewhere in there. Okay? So for example 3, it says place the values square root of 10, pi, and 3 square root of 2 in order from least to greatest. So I had square root of 10, pi, and 3 square root of 2. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to figure out my approximations for square root of 10, pi, and 3 square root of 2. So you can do this on a calculator, or you can think about it a little bit and figure out what it is, okay? Square root of 10 is between square root of 9 and square root of 16, so it's between 3 and 4. It's closer to square root of 9, so it's probably going to be around 3.1, okay? It is helpful when you're doing, like, approximations of pi to figure out exact closer approximations than what you would just think about. So I'm going to pull out my calculator. This one is a... TI 30. Okay. So I'm going to hit 12 and then there's a square root sign. This says square root with the X. That's going to give me the square root. So I'm going to do 10. So there's 10. And I'm going to hit the square root button, this button right here. And that's going to give me my approximation 3.162. Okay. It keeps going on. I can do the same thing for 3 square root of pi. So I'm going to, or sorry, 3 square root of 2. So I'm going to do 3 and then times 2 and then the square root button. There you go. There it is. And I'm going to hit enter or equals. So that gives me 4.5. Okay, so it multiplied, or sorry, 4.2. Okay. So we can see here that it's easy now to see now that we have decimals to be able to put them in order. And it said from least to greatest, that means smallest to biggest. So the smallest one is going to be pi, and then the square root of 10, and then 3 square root of 2. Okay, so that's the order. Pi, square root of 10, and then 3 square root of 2. It is common to have to compare expressions without using actual numbers. So if you saw in the pretest, I actually plugged in numbers to solve them. You can do it without actually doing that. So
For example four, which of the following inequalities is true for all real values of x? So I have a 2x squared is less than or equal to 2x cubed. Okay? So, and then, so at first glance, this might seem like a trick question. Okay? But upon further investigation, it's important to look at all real numbers. So real numbers aren't just your positive numbers. Real numbers are also your negative numbers. Okay? So things that I know, I know that this is a cube root or square or x raised to the third power, and this is a square root. Well, when I multiply a negative times a negative, I get a positive number. But when I multiply a negative times a negative times a negative, that's three negatives, I get a negative number, which means that this is going to be smaller than this number if I use a negative number. So this isn't true for all real numbers because of the fact that if I plug in a negative number, it will make the inequality false. Okay, So I can plug in numbers. Let's put in negative 1. Always when you're doing this, put in small, easy numbers that are quick for you to do, okay? Zero is usually a great one. Um, negative one, positive one. So those are usually really great ones to kind of plug in, okay? So I have negative one squared, because you always do parentheses first. Negative one times negative one is positive one. So I have two times one. Okay, and then negative one cubed is really negative one times negative one times negative one, which is negative one. So now I have two times one, which is two, and two times negative one, which is negative two. Well, that makes this inequality false. So that means it's not true for all real numbers. Okay. For letter B, it says 2x in parentheses squared is greater than or equal to 2x squared. Okay. So at first glance, this one also seems true, right? Because whatever I'm multiplying my x by, I multiply it by 2, and then I square that number. For this one, I square a number, and then I multiply it by 2. So, 2x, the quantity 2x, that's how you read that. Anything in parentheses is the quantity of. The quantity of 2x squared has greater values in all cases when compared to 2x squared. Okay? So whatever number I substitute in, if I put in 1, 2 times 1 squared, okay, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, 1 times 2 is 2. 4 is bigger than 2, okay? So this inequality is true, okay? I do recommend that you try it for a couple different ones. Um, obviously, if you get one on the first try that is clearly false, obviously it's not true. Okay. All right. Example. All right, so there are a couple examples on the rest of your pages. You have letters A, B, C, D, and E. So go ahead and work on those assignments. Make sure that you turn in your answers into Google Classroom.